Hey, this is Peter Reznicek again with ShadowTrader.net. This is a short video to show you how to customize and also interpret uh, the iceberg tick indicator. So first, let's talk about uh, customization, what's possible here. Not too much possible on the customization front, but a couple of things. You'll notice that when you first install your iceberg tick, it's going to come preloaded with a plus 500 line and a minus, minus 500 line, and then also plus 1,000 and minus 1,000 uh, lines. And you can certainly change that or customize that however you want. You just click on the little flask, and then you click on the little gear here next to, the, uh, next to that. And you can see here, you can set where you want those lines to occur. Okay, and if you don't want them plotted, like me personally, I don't like the 500 line. So the 500 line is the upper line one and the lower line one. And you just click here and all you have to do is uncheck where it says show plot. So that's upper line one and this is lower line one and you uncheck show plot and click apply and you can see that goes away. And now I only have the thousands. OK, um, other thing you can do is you can customize a little bit with colors in terms of how it's outlined. You can see how here how it's outlined in green and red. Uh, I can change that. So let's say I wanted this just doesn't really add much. You want to give it a little pizzazz. You can say tick low. Uh, I want to change that one to white or whatever. And you can see it's just going to change the, the outline a little bit like that. Um, some people think that gives it a little bit more, you know, sort of contrast, uh, whatever you like. I personally like to have it just on um, green and red, but just showing you a couple of the different things that, uh, that can be done with it. All right. So I'll just change that back to the way it was. And let's talk a little bit about interpretation. So basically... The reason I created the iceberg tick, and I'm really, really excited to share this with you as a product. It's something that I, I wanted to do for a long time. And, and uh, now that it's, it's finished, I'm, I'm, I really think it, it, it's proven to me that it has an immense amount of value. Basically, the way that you want to interpret New York Stock Exchange ticks, and, and I have always maintained that I think that it is one of the most important market internals there are uh, in terms of intraday price action. The way you want to interpret that nicey tick is you want to be mostly concerned with how much time is spent on either side of the zero line. And in this case, we call it the water line because obviously it's an iceberg. So we're calling this the, the water line here. It's actually, it's just right where the ticks would be uh, at zero. And again, as I was saying, it's all about how much time was spent. So if you're spending a lot of time above zero and you're not going negative, that's telling you a lot about what's happening in term, with the price action of the market. So for instance, if we just mouse over here, now remember the iceberg tick, you should keep it on a one minute time frame. All right, you wanna keep it on the one minute time frame so that it paints very quickly and you're getting an accurate you know, minute by minute read of, of what the tick is doing. But once you've got it set on that one minute, uh, I'm gonna show you just a couple of examples. Like notice that here, if I mouse over, this is, roughly 11 a.m., 11.04 right here on November 30th. And if I go to the corresponding price action in the SPY uh, at the same time at 11.30, right? We said that this is about 11.06 a.m. And this is up in here. Let me find it right in here, right here. See this little rally here? Look at this. This is 45 minutes of the market moving pretty much straight up here for these 45 minutes. And lo and behold, what was happening during the, during that time period, it's this in the iceberg tick. You can see that there are almost no negative ticks. So let's just say, for example, that maybe you were long futures somewhere here. There was a failure to break down the low and you bought some ES and then you were looking for confirmation. So the iceberg tick would give you excellent confirmation in terms of staying with the trade, how long you should stay with the trade, because you can see that the tick is not going negative at all. And it's really telling you uh, a lot about the, the current state of the price action. And then you can see as we get more into uh, this area here, where we have a pretty strong downdraft that actually uh, retests that low, right? You have pretty strong, strong downdraft retesting that low. What is the iceberg tick doing? then it's the opposite. You have almost no positive ticks and you even registered a minus 1000 tick, which is important, right? You register a thousand and you've got almost nothing going on on the upside. So this tells you very, very much about the state of, of the market. And conversely as well, noted, you know, the other thing I want to point out is that when the market isn't doing much, well, you know, I just pointed out like an up move and a down move, but what about what happens when it's like this? Well, that's when you've got equal, equal activity on the iceberg tick on either side of the waterline. And that also tells you a lot about what's going on in the market. And again, I feel like 
this really gives you an, a, a glance immediately and you get to discern what's going on because it's so visual and it's and it's so illustrative as opposed to looking at candlesticks obviously we've all looked at a tick chart on candlesticks and you can see that it just looks completely different right if i change this chart here it's just completely different it's not the same thing at all like you just don't get the same visual visual that you're getting here uh, from this because you've got the shadows and the wicks and everything and, and it's just kind of like a, a barcode type situation okay so that's basically it on the, on the iceberg tick. I would say also watch the iceberg tick very closely at opens. That really can tell you a lot. Like here's an open uh, of uh, December 1st. And you can see the beginning. Uh, if you if you want to go back to December 1st, that was very bullish in the beginning. And then it kind of fell apart. So you have that action where it holds up well because there was a gap up that day. So sometimes on a gap up, it takes time for the ticks to come in. And then you see here where it fell apart. It started to fall apart. And you get the confirmation that maybe you're going to go a little bit lower because you're getting those ticks staying underwater for a, a little while. And then you get the shift as it starts to change. And you can see, obviously, things get a little bit more bullish from there. OK, so it's really pretty simple. It's really just all about a confirmation of how much time is spent on either side of the zero line, because when you are trying to uh, use the nice tick as an internal, that is really the most important thing. All right. So and I've always said, I'll leave you just with this one little comment is I've always said when you're trying to gauge whether or not a move is sustainable, let's just say, for example, that it's an up move. Don't really be concerned with how high the ticks are going. It's how low they don't go. So you so if you're in a situation like this, for instance, right here, I'll just box off um, just the just this little area would be a good example. Let's say that I just happen to be in a future straight or something directional right from say this point here it would probably be staying in it you know it'd be more long than short obviously because you can clearly see how much action do we have underneath versus how much time is being spent above obviously a lot more time is being spent above rather than below and again this is telling you an immense amount about what's going on uh, in the market uh, at that moment okay also don't forget is that if you like you can always customize this in terms of different ticks so it doesn't just work on the nice uh on that you can on thinkorswim it's tick forward slash q i can just type in uh slash q uh any any tick that you can it's t-i-k-s-p uh excuse me t-i-k-s-p is the one for the s p you can put that in as well i find that that one doesn't work very well because it's just 500 stocks and notice that it usually gets split kind of equally for my money the uh new york stock exchange tick is still the the king of them all and it really just tells the tale on an intraday basis and for me i think it's one of the most important internals out there to be watching intraday and the iceberg tick can really give you a beautiful illustration of that uh, as the day unfolds